Okay, guys. Um, start you. Lock that. Gotta take my keys. Oh, I'll just pull up on the side of the road here. Back vineyard. Something I used to love doing for fun was was uh, bridge hopping. Just driving around Western Sydney looking for bridges and just pull up, flick a few lures either side of the bridge, see if there's any bass there and then move on. So I, th I thought I'd take you for a bit of a ride with me today and see how we go. Alright, just going to use a little black diver, custom painted for us. It's just shallow with a little wide tail action so if there's anything under the bridge or around it I should draw them out with this. If not we'll go to plastics and go a bit deeper into it fishing bridges like this because there's no pathway so it's very dangerous I tend to stick outside of the concrete so it's safe for cars but then you got to worry about falling in fortunately it's not real clean water but where else can the bus go I was dumping the shallow diver, it's because it, it's a surface lure and a subsurface, so I could start with a cicada or something, but that's purely surface now. We don't know if there's bass here or not. Might as well take both options first. fish in here, who knows? Straight under the bridge. Gotta love that. It didn't take long at all. I just uh, just turned the camera on at the ute. It's just parked up the road a bit. Come down here. First bus. Tiny little fella, but it's me, buddy. But the thing is, I was driving past here anyway. And I had time to kill. You know, I didn't have the time, I, I don't have the time to go into Sydney or Cara or up the, the Barawa, but I do have time to, like a couple of hours on my hands, if I can do it, use it locally. Uh, I might be able to get a few fish still and have, have a bit of fun. Right, now I know there's fish in this dirty pussy water. I'll leave the bridge and I'll fish either side of it for a while. Now my problem is this, I've got these reeds in front of me. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to get lures through the water I want to run. But then, at the same time, they're only reeds, so I should be able to rip them through it. And mainly when I come to the surface here, just give them a little flick out. Ah. See, I'm just ripping out. And that's one of the reasons I'm using a 10 pound braid. Anything less than that would just snap off in this stuff. I wouldn't know it, but there's a creek there. How am I going to get to it? What have we got here? 
nice. I like the squeezes because oh, is that a flash at it? Follow or not? Because the bass can just get lazy in these squeezes, sit here and wait for a pot of mullet or something to come through. Could have been a follow. Anything you see, like just a glimpse of silver or any sort of flash at a lure, could be a, potentially a good fish. There's one. <laughs> Come here. Oh, it's already yellow. What's wrong with you, buddy? Doesn't look real healthy, does he? Oh, this poor old fella. See the sores all over him. See how milky and silvery he is. Oh, I hate that. But you, you only got to look at the stuff on the water. See all the oil slicks and chemicals. Still, he was a bass. I'll take him. Like I said earlier about these squeezes, like I knew lazy bass will be in them. Yeah, since the developments on this creek, see the... so much chemical in this water so it's just rotting everything but look just black like black oil nice right, so I'll switch to a simple soft plastic rig mainly have a look where I am so hard to get your lures back out of this stuff ooh, ooh, ooh. could they be in the pus this is the most fun big bass coming out of this. You gotta be in here, buddy. I know you're in here. Oh, what's that? It's one very sick looking fish. It's a big bass just on the surface. Oh, that bass is about 40 centimeters long. And it was just sitting up there on the surface. I spun that little right past it and it turned its nose on it. That's not good. That's not good at all. Well, that was a big old bass. That bass was so sick. There's no way they're gonna eat on a reaction bite. Makes sense now because I've had two, three silver follows where they followed up the hard body lure and they're real silver. And it's sort of making sense now that these fish are just sick. And, and this particular bridge that I pulled up on, I've been doing this for over 20 years. And the fish have always been magnificent in here. But there's a new estate further up. And they built, I don't know, 10, 10 20,000 houses. And there's a lot of raw sewage running in here and chemical now. And our little Aussie bus just can't handle it. There's an election coming up. Wait for this car to move. And my advice to anyone that votes Ask the politician you're thinking about voting for if he's got any intentions on cleaning up our environment. We need politicians that feel the environment is as important as business. Look left, look right, look left again.
thousands and thousands and thousands of new homes, all built on a floodplain. Ignore the hill there, these houses roll down into the valley and they're sitting on the pondages that used to be here. And before they built this estate, they couldn't cope. I'm going to show you this, guys. There we are. Now, I've been fishing this Kalani chain of ponds for over 20 years, 30 years now. I just want to show you what the problem is. See this clay here? That's not clay. That's shit. That's shit and toilet paper. You can smell it. If you don't believe me, you can you come down here and smell it. That's just human shit. All through there. And look at it here. Human shit. Mixture of toilet paper, tampons, and shit. And they've just upgraded the pipe. This is an upgrade. Now all this flows directly into the creek every time. Then you look around, look at all this. It's just shit. There's no other word for it. I'm not swearing, it's what it is, poo. Runs directly into this creek here. So if you wonder why all your fish are dying, every creek in Sydney's got raw shit running in it. it needs to stop. And then they've just built another 10,000 houses. You know, we, we need to upgrade our treatment works. It's got to be a political issue. Any politician that comes up with an idea, see this? See here? See how the shit? It just rolls and it goes directly straight. See the flow line? Directly straight in at the bridge there and straight into the creek. It's sad. There you have it, guys. There's the creek. Right beside me is the overflow for the sewerage. Massive development behind me. We already can't cope, but they're doing nothing about it. Alright, uh, let's just join the dots here. I'm coming into Windsor now. Now that creek where you've just seen the raw sewerage go into it, where you've seen the sickly bass, well that runs in to this creek here, South Creek. We're about to cross over the bridge of South Creek. South Creek itself runs raw sewerage. Also, Eastern Creek that links into it runs raw sewerage. So there's three creeks that overflow raw sewerage and, and combine here at Windsor. So if you just get that, like picture that, like you've got three systems joining into one, all with toxic waste, raw sewerage, chemicals. And mostly, I, I feel 90% of it's uh, done by Sydney Water through the treatment works. That goes in here. This creek runs out just here at Windsor. Now when we cross the bridge at Windsor here, you'll see that when the tide runs out, the water from Richmond comes down. When the tide runs in, the water from South Creek goes up. So this is probably the most polluted part of all of it, where all of it all of it combines and sits here in the tide, which goes backwards and forwards. When, when you see it's when we cross over this bridge, on the left hand side there is a big sandy beach. It's one of the most popular swimming holes in, on the whole 